Welcome everybody, Unstoppable Sluts has returned with yet another Age of Empires 3 to 5th edition casting game to do today. And it will be yet another Aaliyah Germany here. This never gets old versus a uh, Edward Kenway Russia. So that's a very different opponent for Jeremy this time. I'm wondering, since I am an Unstoppable Stiletsi myself, if Unstoppable Stiletsi will be able to blast his way through Aaliyah. Hopefully, hopefully for building my name, he does. We'll see. But, uh, before we get started, we need to check this map out, figure out how that's going to affect the gameplay here, the strategies, so forth. So this map here is just like a more Indian subcontinent version of, uh, Isak, uh, Arkansas in the Legacy game, so big thing you know with this map is you got this little creek here that's in the top. You can walk through this creek anywhere on it, but you just can't build on it. Then you get this cliff that comes on the other side of the river. There's some native sites here. This one has the Udasi natives on it. The one that I remember in Legacy had Cherokee natives since it was in, you know, Arkansas. This one's in India, so you have to have Indian natives on it, so lots of chakrams. Then you get this trade route down here, too. This is always the point of contention, I find, you know. Players trying to grab as many of these TPs as possible, usually. I think Germany's going to try to grab more of them myself. Not only because that's what Germany likes, but Aaliyah certainly likes trading posts. But you never know. Maybe Russell content contested. You never, you can never quite be too sure of anyone's build. So we'll see. Let's get started and see how this goes. You know, I'm crossing my fingers that Russia is finally going to knock down the mighty Aaliyah HOA one v one build of uh, Germany. But we'll see. We'll see. And what would Russia have exactly to do that with? Well, there are some weapons in Russia's disposal they can use to fight Germany with. Namely, their hyper-aggression. They are really good at hyper aggressive And what do I mean by that? They can, instead of getting a normal barracks, they can build a blockhouse, which, you know, you can build pretty close to your opponent because it does protect itself with a ranged attack. And from there, you can make blocks of infantry instead of just single infantry. You can make five recruits, which is the same thing as a musketeer, but weaker. You can make ten of me, the infamous, scary, OP, lovable, unstoppable Stiletsi. I come in with multipliers against the heavy infantry, the light cavalry, so if you're fighting a lot of muskets, you would use me in that case. Then you got the Pulo Chicks. You can make some of those. They're a halberd unit, pretty solid as well. And then, of course, if that's not enough, you can obviously ship in Cossacks, too, from the home city, since they're a one-pop cab unit, so you can mass them up pretty easily. In general, Russia has a lot of good combat abilities, you know. Instead of working on strength, they usually work on numbers, right? Lots and lots of units. And also, quick ways to train them as well, because not only do they get fencing school, they get an additional dueling school which adds another aspect of infantry training speed to their arsenal. Interestingly enough though, this Russia did not go with either fencing school or um, the dueling school, which I'm pretty surprised by. This Russia instead is going to be using... Obviously every Russia go starts with Distributivism as card number one. Because it gives you a good wood, wood trickle and you don't get villager shipments with this sieve. I do see spice trade in here, which will help out in the early game if they want to go aggro. Eco theory helps to a lesser extent. Some decent combat cards here. You know, we got bow yards, which helps with the mounted units. And then we have uh, new order regiments, which helps with the blockhouse units. So your poor chicks and recruits and me, the unstoppable Stiletsi. Advance Arsenal, this is not going to be till late, late game. We do have Unstoppable Stiletsi Combat, which gives me 20% improved stats. Cav Combat. A lot of technologies here for, like, unit upgrades. The thing I love about technologies with Rush is, the more techs you get, the more that unit spam ends up becoming really dangerous, because your units end up becoming more and more viable, you know what I mean? So when you're spamming them, they do become even bigger threats. We also have Refridge in here for food eco. 
Uh, this is an interesting one. Georgian Hussars. Uh, hand cavalry armed with cold steel, good against light infantry. 17 Hussars and gives them guard upgrades. Very interesting. I've never used this one before. Sounds good though. Sounds promising. Aging up with the Quartermaster, 400 wood politician. That's a pretty gold standard for Russia as well. Same thing, Aliyah's gonna do the same thing. You know, Core Master doing the HOA 1v1 build. Going to Scepter Wagon, it's gonna hit Capitalism next. And then uh, Scepter Wagons again here. However, I'm wondering is it possible Aliyah could play more carefully here? Because he knows the opponent is Russia. Russia is a far more, more serious threat early game to Aaliyah than the other Sids are. Russia can actually hold its own in age 2 really well here. And if is not careful, he might lose everything. You know, the Porachek's a really decent hand unit. The, uh, Stru yeah, Unstoppable Stiletzi, I do a lot of damage, you know, I can certainly hurt his Doppels, his Pikes. You know, and then of course recruits just all around an okay musketeer. They lack a lot of stats being like a trash unit, but they still get the job done once you mass mass them up enough, you know what I mean? And I certainly do a lot of damage when you mass me up enough. So I think Aaliyah might have a run for his money here if he's not careful. What do you think? So going right for the uh, three Sutler wagons this time. Not, not pulling in the uh, capitalism. I think at this point, Aaliyah's probably going to play more conservatively here and try to stay away from the trading posts, you know? Like normally, I think he'd probably try to grab a TP at this point, get the capitalism, and then get the Sutler Wagons, but at this point, Aaliyah needs to be very, very careful. He's getting the Rat Skeller Tavern right now. This will trickle him a bit of coin. If you don't get to Fortress Age, though, Tavern's not going to be too useful, so I mean, I'd be a little bit careful here. You know, I might opt for going with a lot of crossbowmen at this point. Crossbowmen mass might do some justice here to you. Oh, oh, we got a Russian 5 Kazakh shipment against the Yuans. This is not going to go well for you. You know, this is a dedicated cav shipment. This is just some free extra cav. And now they have to retreat. This one's going to go down, and this one is not looking good either. Yeah, that one, I think, is going to get away, but all the threats that it had are now gone. He's going to trail it with one Cossack now. Yeah, the one Cossack can beat this Yulon with its strained HP. Very easily. Very easily. Yep, it's completely eliminated. Took out a settler there. Yeah, it seems like uh, Russia's got the map control right now. I mean, what's this? You're using unstoppable Stiletzi to shoot a bunch of innocent monkeys. That's not nice. It's not nice to shoot monkeys, man. Monkeys are your friends. But you do get a nice, um, 60 coin from it, from the Ginkgo Leaves. Not a bad price, not a bad reward, you know? You just need the Baron Skirt to grab it. Building another blockhouse. This will really secure this uh, forward position now because this is going to add another ranged attack from the other blockhouse. This is going to make it hard for Leah to break out now, break out, out of it now. Germany is going to try to counteract it with uh, Fortress Age play, going up with the bishop. That's probably going to be more defensive in this case. I mean, normally that's what Leah uses to boom out with, but at this point, I see that as more of a defensive option. Because you know you're going to be under direct assault of the Russians. You're going to need, you know, another town center to provide its ranged cover fire for you. 
Thankfully those Yuan's got a nice free Kazak kill there, but they might end up getting killed now. Oh my, they're, they're doing alright, I mean. All things considered, these Yuan's are doing a good job at luring in these Kazaks to their deaths. Really good stuff, man. Really good stuff. A lot of Yuan's were taken out. What's Russia going to do? What's Russia doing? So Russia is expected is going to do this all in age 2. They're not, they're not going to try to win with upgrades. They're going to try to win with sheer numbers here. This is a substantial army. 20 recruits, 20 unstoppable Stoletsis. This is a serious problem. And guess what? Guess what? If Aaliyah is not careful, his covered wagon from the Bishop Age that might actually get sniped here. That would spell a lot of trouble. Will it though? Will it get sniped? It will... Oh no, you just left at the wrong time. Yeah, that, that would have ended it right here. That would have been the end. However, the Minutemen did a great job at just walling that area off and making him run away. Alright, so now Leah does have a bit of a fighting defensive chance at this point. He's also going to construct a third town center with these Scepter Wagons. Another good thing about Scepter Wagons, in addition to their better gather rate, they they build a lot faster as well. This is why it's preferred that you use the Scepter Wagons and construct things instead of the Settlers. They just do it much quicker. Very quickly. I'm going to try to train some Bosniaks here, it looks like. But do you have enough resources is the question. Also, this town center is nowhere closely. It's You need to work on this town center very quickly. Yeah, you do, do you even have any time to complete that thing, man? No, not even any... This is horrible. Look at this thing. His villagers are literally caught here trying to build this structure. It's clearly the... Are they even going to complete it? No, he didn't complete the town center. He lost most. He's gonna lose all these villagers, right? Right? He's gonna lose all these villages. He's gonna lose all these villagers. Absolutely atrocious. Look at so many villagers were lost here. This town center only has 18 range attack now. That was this ended Aaliyah, man. What 2k points of Heim? We never see this at Aaliyah. We never see them this behind. This is an emergency Aaliyah situation. All stand on deck at this point. Sending the eight skirmisher ship in as a basic defense. Unfortunately, uh, Edward's gonna have to retreat from this. Skirmishers are a serious threat here. Their multipliers threaten the recruits severely here. And they win win one on one against the unstoppable Stoletsis without any upgrades, right? Oh, Definitely. So you have to be really careful of this. Very careful. That said though, Germany cannot really travel too far at this point. You know, they're kinda of cooped up in their base now. This deck did not have a lot of unit shipments, so they're not gonna get seven skirms here to add on top of that, right? They're gonna have to go with the war wagons, most likely. They're gonna have to add Yuan's in. They're gonna have to, you know, come up with some sort of game plan to defend this. It's not gonna be easy at this point. Yeah, is uh, Russia going to make more uh, batches of their settlers? They are getting steel traps now, so they are hunkering down a bit here and getting ready for the mid-game at this point. Lots of resources, though. I mean, they need some houses, but definitely enough uh, food for more recruits, poor chicks, perhaps. So economically, Russia is pretty expansive right now. You know, they got options. They can actually afford to have hunts. 
this deep into the map because they're not being friend at all. This is kind of the inverse of what we usually see with Aaliyah. Leah normally has full reign of the map because the opponent is trying to do some sort of turtle thing. But this time, uh, Aaliyah is the turtle who had to build his little turtle walls here to keep the enemy out of. All he has is like eight skirmishers, man. He literally came and fight these guys out, you know what I mean? Best he can do is try to, you know, discourage them. Discourage them with walls, discourage them with the skirmishers, extra range and uh, damage. Yeah, Estrella only has... Unfortunately, they only gave me like 14 range, so I can't really shoot very far. And that does make me a soft target to the uh, skirms. Russia now will be taking advantage of this to get a fortress age of their own. What will it be? It will be the Exiled Prince. Instead of getting an actual prize, you just get a quicker age up time. After that, I would say maybe a Prishnix. Prishnix could be a serious threat here. You know it, man. A Prishnix, they just break the game's logic. The things defy everything you know about AoE 3. A Prishnix just siege their way into anything. They rip through villagers. They rip through grenadiers. They rip through artillery. They rip through a lot of things. So, gonna get the uh, veteran upgrades on both recruits and unstoppable Stiletzi. Going for stats. Gonna be shipping two Falconets as well. Yeah, the Falconets are gonna be key to this push, I think. Mainly because uh, Falks are not a weakened version of themselves. They actually do a lot of damage here. If, as long as they're protected, they should get the job done pretty quickly. Ali at this point forced to get Ascari uh, with his uh, skirmishers. Gonna make some Bosniaks as well. Yeah. So he's. I think Ali is just scrambling to get whatever army together he can to deal with this Russian pressure on him. You know what I mean? At this point though, Russia can start to attack the outer walls with Falconets without too much punishment. Obviously, if you once try to move in on that, the Russian horde of infantry will be there to meet them, which they were. While the Yuans went down in that engagement, now the Falks can continue to siege at those walls while the Russian infantry try to branch out around the cannons to try to hit things. Uh, two more Bosniaks getting added in. Quite a formidable unit though, I mean if anything's gonna save you it's gonna be the Bosniaks. Really good against me, the unstoppable Stiletzi, and not bad against the recruit either. Gonna take a house out. At, yeah, at this point, taking houses out could be painful. Though they are going to ship in 1k uh, wood. Lee is just laughing. Laughing off his uh, situation at this point. Not much else he can do. Going to try with the Bosniaks now. Oh, they're going to get their charge attack in because of how quick it is. Oh, they took out one of the Falks. That was substantial. That was that that did some damage. You just want to take out if they could take out the last Falk, that might buy them some more time to do something here. Yeah, at this point. Oh, yep, yep, just enough to take it out. I guess that charge attack from the other Buzzack did do something. All right. Now Leah has a bit more breathing room now. Now he's not under direct siege anymore. At least not in that way. I mean, he's under siege in the fact that he can't get ex extra supplies from around the map. But in terms of having his buildings getting burned down, that's not going to happen quite yet. Culverin. Uh, I think it's a little bit premature for a culverin, though. Is it? Is it premature for... Yes, it is. We do not see any foundry from... Uh, Leah yet, so I don't know if that, um, if that culvert's really going to do you any good here. Maybe if you want to get some, you know, falconets, that would be okay. It might be kosher for you, but, um, culvert's just going to be a waste of res. 
Yeah, I mean, Aaliyah always... I think Aaliyah always gets culverins by default. This is just the wrong time to do it, I think. Because you're not dealing with any artillery here. Just because you see two Falk from Russia... Hey, that doesn't mean that they're going to be training cans. It simply means they sent their default to Falconet shipment your way. Once that shipment's done, there's no telling if they're going to continue to produce those or not. I mean, at this point, if you're a Leo, I don't know what you can do to defend at this point. Priest? Why, why are you getting the priest for? Like, you think they're just not going to attack you because they're priests or something? And they, you know, don't want to end up in a special place if they shoot them? Uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, at this point with, like, your bad resource situation, priest is probably not a bad idea because you could just throw them in the front with their HP and their peers. Uh, Ascaris. Is that all he has? Is he can, can he just go with Scaris at this point? Scari doesn't seem like the play at this point because he's not going Cav either, you know. And I think from his engagements he should sort of know that there's no additional Cossacks, there's no Aprishniks. He might be worried about the Aprishnik shipment though if he's checked out his opponent's deck. That might be what's causing the fear here. Okay, so this is why Aaliyah was getting culverins. He was worried about an industrial age and the engineer politician. Engineer Politician grants you two more Falconets that you can use to continue see. And we do have um, a Prishnix. So it does look like Aaliyah is predicting this stuff really well. He knows that a Prishnix is going to be heading his way. And he knows that um, two more Falconets are going to be coming his way. If he wants to build a foundry, I think uh, Edward might actually be able to get field guns on there for a cheap price. You know, only 250 on the food, 250 on the wood. Prishnix, though, is going to be a serious problem here. If these, these Prishnix do their job, you're done. If villagers are gone, much of your buildings, your infrastructure is going to be wiped out. Yeah, this one Culverin, though, this one budget Culverin is just doing a... Doing, they did take out one of the Falks, so they're going to take out the other one? Yes, it is. So, Fal Culverin did its job perfectly here. However... The pursuit of the infantry, though, is going to wipe you out. Just way too much infantry. You know, this is the thing where Russia becomes a real problem is once they get all their infantry going. You know, veteran Strelad, veteran uh, recruit in large numbers. Unless you have an army to meet that with, that's going to be kind of a horrible problem for you. And they're already starting to shoot out the settlers even before the Aprishniks arrive. Where are those Aprishniks? I see some co Oh, they're right here, of course, of course. Right where the culvern is. Yeah, the problem with Aprishnix is they have multipliers against villagers and artillery. So you let them go in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is literally 60 damage against villagers. Yeah, Leah can just laugh at this situation. GG, well played. Yeah, I mean, this is really substantial because we haven't seen Aaliyah get defeated with this, like, Germany said, for a very, very long time. Very long time. An exceptional one. Wait a second. So, according to this, Culverins actually deal multipliers against Aprishniks because they have the siege unit tag. I never knew that. I never knew that. That's that's kind of an interesting fact. So, if you're, like, in trouble with Aprishniks, you could technically mass up a bunch of Culverins with, like, Culverin Royale and maybe... Snipe them one by one. I never knew that actually, but how well Yeah, you actually do get a bit of an edge on that because um, It it basically undoes the malice that's right over here Almost not 100% it doesn't do it, but I'm sure you would still be doing like 30 What like 30 damage I think or something like that to the That's kind of interesting, but uh we're going to check the post game out. Just look at that. Yeah, this is one of the few times uh, Aaliyah's actually behind in resources. He was literally drained of a chance to move out with his town centers, right? Didn't matter that you got the bishop. Didn't matter that you even built the third town center. In fact, that third town center cost you your entire villager economy. You know, you literally sacrifice all but a handful of settlers to get that done. And militarily... 
Rush's big numbers. This rushes the Sword of Civ where you get lots of units and you get lots of kills. You know, and that's what we saw here. 119 on the army, 93 kills, far superior to that of Germany. While they did ratio-wise do better combat-wise, Russia just got the more casualties they needed to win, including a lot of civilians and a lot of sieges as well to different buildings like walls, houses. Yeah, they were doing damage up and down the board here. Yeah, And also the fact that Ger Germany was so cornered that their most common unit was Minutemen should tell you everything at that point. Anyways, though, um, I hope you enjoyed this game. This was really a substantial one because we actually saw Leah get defeated for once. Doesn't happen a lot, you know. That HOA 1v1 deck seems to do really well a lot, a lot of the time, so I mean, yeah, that's, that's something to watch out for, you know. But anyways, if you like seeing cast of games and seeing strong players go up against each other, definitely check out more of the cast of games I've done so far and the ones to come. If you have your own casting games, no matter what the skill level is, send them my way, you know. If you're not that good, I'll teach you things. If you're really good, I'll just revel in th the things that you do and try to learn them myself. So, yeah. You can really learn something from everybody, basically, you know. I, don't, I think everybody has their own talents in this game, and it's important that we know what they are and try to learn them. So, yeah. Anyways, see you on the next match. There's a lot of them to come, so sign off now. I wonder if this is the end of Aaliyah's Germany streak after this mess. Uh, we'll, let's find out. We'll find out. We'll see.